Hey fellow YouTubers, I got one big work project that I'm in the middle of. I haven't done a video on, but it's worth doing a video on, well, I think. It's up to you guys to whether you like it or not, but uh, basically the story is this. I live in Hamilton, Ohio. Okay, there is a, uh, a little baseball group it's called West Side Little League. What happened is they had three full size electronic outdoor scoreboards made by the Everbright Corporation, All American Scoreboards. They went down and they decided to replace the scoreboards with something newer. Well there's another sports group it's called Little Blue All Stars. Hamilton Blue All Stars Junior something like that. Um so, they need a scoreboard. There's Potentially, there's talks. Maybe they want two done. Maybe they want all three done. I don't know. That's about, that's about me. Unfortunately, it appears that we're not going to be able to do uh, the scoreboard in time for their season when it starts this weekend on August the 20th. Because, well, I can't make the slow boat from China any faster because I'm waiting on parts. But while I'm waiting on parts, I can explain a little bit of what's going on for you viewers that are interested in such a thing. So, uh, there's, there's, there's two parts to this. Actually, before we go moving on, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up my scoreboard file. And I developed several schematics. Here's the CPU board. I'm using the all-famous, well now famous, XB modules, which are... 802.15.4 wireless over Bluetooth. Well, it's in a branch of Bluetooth. It's not really Bluetooth, but it's a blunt branch of it. Because uh, 802.15 is Bluetooth, I think. Don't quote me on that. Uh, so we got wireless transceiver hooked up to an Atmega 324. But my schematic software only has a 32, but they're pin compatible, but they're not address compatible so it has to be said in the compiler what CPU chip you're using but what we're going to do is we're going to use an ATX power supply to power this board there's there's the ATX power on transistor and then this transistor here is one of the PWM brightness drivers this is the other PWM brightness driver and then there's the reset transistor because what what my intentions are is while the scoreboard is in operation wirelessly I can activate a bootloader and reprogram the firmware in this chip over the wireless link that's my goal but there, there's two signals here there's the ATX power good and the, the power or power on and the power good the way this works is the CPU has got a power up start or power on startup procedure and what happens is the the CPU will turn the power supply on by grounding the power on pin. What this does is when the power supply comes on, it's in the ATX standard that after the power supply starts up, this line goes high. This is an active low signal, that's an active high signal. So when this goes high, uh, the processor is using this as a feedback to indicate whether the power supply is functioning or not. If it is, it enables the system and everything's fine. If not, it'll report back to the computer. Hey, there's a problem. Power supply could be at fault. Please replace the power supply. So, anyway, my idea for the scoreboard is there's going to be red-green LEDs on the face of the board. You've got your time, your guest, your home, yards to go, downs, and your quarter. All going to be red-green LEDs. So when the time goes down, it'll be yellow or orange and then red when it gets to a certain point and when the home is leading guest home goes green guest goes red when the guest is leading home guest goes green red or home goes red but anyway so but if i'm driving a shitload of leds i'm going to need logic level fets because i don't need i don't want pre-drivers the less parts i have the better off i am so i'm using an irl iz 14 in my design to drive the LEDs to pull them to ground through these transistors which should be able to handle the current and then there's our company RCSE Roberts Computer Systems and Electronics um, so that's the CPU board the next board 
is the bus board, which is where everything interconnects together. And, that, and then, uh, let's see, there's the seg seven segment display board. This uh, has my 74HC595 serial shift register to control everything. There's the input jack. Um, and then I'm using a PMP NPN Darlington driver to drive the LEDs and a whole array of them. You got your you got your red side and you got your green side supplied by these and then those get pulled down with those logic level fences I explained. There are all the digits there are 33 of them. And then you have your there's 33 of them between three scoreboards. I mean there's 11 of them on one scoreboard. Uh, and then there's the colon. There's only one of those. That's why I say note optional circuit omitted otherwise meaning it's not included on anything but the the time and uh and to make it even crazier for you know the the more dates or any kind of thing they would want to be able to say i'm developing an led sign which is going to have 45 leds across and then there's the top line and the bottom line there's seven it's a five by seven LED layout per you know just a standard dot matrix character and there's two of them I, mean, I didn't want to fit it all in one schematic so what I did was I drew out one block and then made the second block which is exactly like this but it's just you know just the layout same exact Darlington driver but I didn't put any numbers on it because it's the same thing as the the, the other seven segment displays and then there's the two shift registers for the for the row, and then all the column drivers are using NPN, 33 ohm resistors, and then, you know, all that fun stuff. So the point of the marquee, or the scrolling LED sign, is when, let's say if they want to rotate their schedule through, or time, day, maybe a warning alert, whatever, this can be displayed. And they're actually, to the scoreboard, there was a sponsor or advertisement sign that sat on top of the scoreboard. Well, the, the four foot because it's it's eight foot long. I want to have a two foot adver LED or fluorescent advertisement sign on each side, and four foot in the middle is going to be the LED sign, and it's two foot tall. So I'm going to use pegboard for the LEDs. When I get the project done, you'll you'll have pictures of it. But I haven't started building it yet because I'm waiting for parts. Um, Let's see, is there anything else? There's the there's the period slash quarter. There's four at least four open. We're trying to debate whether we want to put who has the ball on the scoreboard. Let's say if we do, I have four open spots. Just add two of them to control them or whatever. Um, you know, the design could be modified later down the road. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up the ABR software. I'm going to close out the file I had open because that was the BU meter that we just did a video on. We're going to take and open up the scoreboard. Let's see, microcontroller unit code, score all. That's what we're going to call it. I'm going to communicate a 192, you know, 19.2 kilobits per second baud at 18.432 megahertz for no communication errors. I got a flags register, all the variables. It's like 3,000 LEDs and all that crap. I am not using dropping resistors. And you're going to you're automatically think, oh, you're just going to blow the LEDs up. Yeah, that's true. But if I do dropping, if I don't do dropping resistors, I have one thing to my advantage, the PWM. I can change the brightness of the display. And when I get the thing built, I'm going to try to lock in a max value of what the safe zone of the LEDs are. And then record a voltage drop, make sure everything's kosher. Once I got the correct voltage drop, not exceeding that voltage drop, I'm going to mark down what the PWM values are and set those as my max values. That way you can never exceed those values. Otherwise, uh, as I say, no limiting resistors, bye-bye 3000 LEDs. And the LEDs were not cheap. So here's my routine, I got a command handler. Checks the, it makes sure the checksum is correct with the LRC byte uh, length redundancy check. 
and then it, it has a header and a length and all that stuff and make sure everything's good there before it accepts the packet otherwise because oh, going over wireless you got to have checks and boundaries checks and balances and then this is the command handler it handles all the information being sent to the sign or the, the scoreboard whatever and then there's the scan routine for the marquee where it does everything for sending out the row bytes and all that shit and then there's the self test routine what it does is it tests RAM and I'll be very careful about this because you don't want to write into the I.O. obviously since it's using the vari since it's using variables it's using somewhat of RAM so that's why I'm making my start position at 010A instead of 0100 because I know everything from 010A on earlier is my variables that I'm using because if those variables are bad in RAM this routine's gonna fail anyway and then I don't and I, and I, and I stop at 08BF instead of 08FF because there's a software stack, a hardware stack, and the frame for compiler frame, you know, for the framing is stored there. You don't want to overwrite that. <laughs> That's that all hell would break loose then. Um, so, and then there's the numerical shifting routine. And then there's the uh, calculator that converts the ASCII numbers into segments, like 0 through 9 and all that stuff. And, and there's all the buffers being clocked out in my serial I.O. routines and all that fun stuff. Don't want to say because I screwed something up. So, uh, well, that's that. Now, next thing. I'm going to minimize that. We're going to look at my favorite programming language is Visual Basic 6. Yes, it's getting old, but, you know, that's how it goes. And if you noticed, it switches over and turns off arrow. Um, the reason why it does that, there's a very, 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 did I say very annoying bug in the Visual Basic 6 IDE, and that is through arrow. There's a problem with arrow, or with Visual Basic 6, that makes it incompatible with arrow. What happens is, for example, I'm going to go ahead and open the program. Um, like, like if I'm working with my form, if I drag a control, it draws and moves slower than a 386 drawing a greeting card and print shop deluxe. And that's saying something. So in order to get around this issue, you have to turn off the uh, uh, desktop manager or arrow, whichever way you look at it, in compatibility mode. Then it works fine. There's no problems, but it looks like shit when you're running, running Windows. But what can you do? What can you say? Um, another problem is, uh, well, they actually fixed it. They updated the run times for VB6 for Vista on up. It allows the, the applications not to have the same bug because they dropped support of the IDE, but they didn't drop support of the applications yet. So they fixed it so the applications don't have the bug and they made the applications multi-threaded. So when you have a modal form pop-up such as an input box or a message box, it doesn't stop the timers and everything from working. The IDE does, because they didn't fix it in the IDE. They only fixed it after it's compiled to, the, to an EXE. So, um, I'm about to run out of memory on my camera, so this is going to be a two-part video.